I'm Shivani Muthana from Your Story Media, and uh, you are uh, with us on this fireside chat. Uh, we're uh, talking about how to crack the stock market code with access quant funds. Now, for many of us, of course, we do know that uh, investing in the stock market uh, is uh, a relatively uh, a tough uh, task. Uh, sometimes it is a conundrum that we really leave our fund managers uh, to solve for us. So, very investors also sometimes even turn to family and friends for investment advice, but such opinions, of course, are based on factors like biases, past valuations, and individual growth assessments that might not really always be correct. Uh, so we do know that there is scope for error, and that really has led fund houses to explore the role of technologies like artificial intelligence and the quantitative based models to really experiment with something called quant funds. Now, this, of course, is a relatively niche uh, category of mutual funds. It essentially uses data driven approach to pick stocks for you, and um, that, of course, uh, sort of minimizes the human bias. Fund houses, of course, are waking up to this potential. So let us uh, discover how all of this really works and uh, what quant funds can do for you in terms of uh, making an investment, uh, maybe um, in a sense, indirectly in the stock markets, and to help us really decode all this buzz around uh, quant funds and uh, the sentiment really out there when it comes to the stock markets and investing through mutual funds. We have with us Chandresh Nigam, who is the Managing Director and CEO of Access Mutual Fund. Thank you so much, Chandresh, for joining us today. Hi, Shivani, and really wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Chandresh. Uh, now, just uh, you know, heads up for our viewers that Chandresh, of course, has a vast uh, number of years of experience and 10 years, uh, that's uh, over a decade with access, uh, with access Mutual Fund. Uh, he has, of course, um, uh, pioneered um, uh, a lot of um, fund, uh, fund launches, and he is, of course, uh, uh, in charge of the company's fund management philosophy and fund processes. So, uh, Chandresh, you know, before we uh, sort of dive into what really the fund and the quant fund uh, is, is about uh, give us your reading of the current stock market because you know uh, we are in a lockdown right now and the last year same time uh, the sentiment was very weak we saw a 40 percent dip in the two weeks of the initial strict lockdown uh, this time again we're in lockdown but uh, the markets are largely volatile but also ignoring uh, the economic disruption of the second wave so uh, how, how do you really read investor sentiment right now yeah, I think you said it all, Shivani. I think the thing is the markets are volatile, unpredictable. That is what they always are. And uh, we as fund managers have to take that into account. There is sentiment, there is economic news, there is the fundamentals, as we call it, the perception of growth or expectation of growth, all that coming in together to you know, finally give you that stock price on the screen. I mean, a number of factors which comes in. So if you ask me today, what is the situation? I would say, say that the market is basically climbing a real wall of worry. Worry was the things which mm -hmm. you talked about, uh, the, uh, you know, the lockdown and the fact that demand may take lot longer this time to come back because we are having a much worse second wave and it's not over. It is getting, it's ebbing in some of the bigger cities, but smaller cities are still struggling. So it will have a slightly longer term impact uh, why? So, but the market is what it is telling us, and the investors essentially mm -hmm. are telling us that it's fine. I think we just look through it. Equity is anyway for the long run, and uh, companies are expected to do well over the medium to long run. This is another three six months of uh, disruption. Let's look through it and see if there is value and money making opportunities in the market which to an extent because of COVID in many sectors has been further accelerated. So, so it's fine, I think. Uh, sentiment is, I think, hence reasonably positive. Now, the people who are worried about this and think that, the, in fact, actually there hasn't been much volatility if you really look at it as compared to the market. Yeah. So uh, people are, I think, looking at opportunities to get into the market. There's still a lot of money on the sidelines that's you know, keeping the market extremely resilient uh, despite the kind of uh, news flow which is there all around us. So long answer to your short to your question, but yes, markets are though are unpredictable, I think holding on really very well. Right, and I 
I think uh, you've had a lot of uh, very valid, interesting points there. Of course, you know, the fact that uh, equities are for the long run and there's always an opportunity to buy on dips when, uh, when you know, the market is sort of uh, uh, seeing some bit of volatility. So very interesting scenario there. Um, now, in this um, environment, really, if you can shed light on the important factors that has risen to the popularity of quant funds per se, because as you say, it's uh, largely uh, driven by data-driven facts. Yeah. So, yeah, I think coming to quant funds, I think we've been seeing their growth and, uh, you know, in most of the uh, more developed you know, global markets over a period of time, I think they've really come into their own over the last 10, 15 years, maybe more like 20 years. So, in a sense, it is, people use quants in various ways. I mean, you can do it fundamental. Sometimes people think, oh, it's what to do a lot with technicals. Sometimes they're saying that, okay, it's maybe just a lot of huge amounts of data mining. And all these, so quant is a term which can be you know, used for very, uh, you know, some people just do it for sector overweighting, underweighting, depending on some mm -hmm. indicators. At the end of the day, what does quant mean? In a sense, I think most of the existing funds, what we call the traditional way of investing, it also uses some quant. Ultimately, we all boil down to some numbers to ultimately make decisions. So broadly, it is using numbers, using data to come out with some uh, what I said, superior investment decisions. But what we really mean by quant is that then we try and processize it. We try and build rules around it. We try and take away biases, which you anyway alluded to in your opening comment. And mm -hmm. hence, it's not to take away the value of the fund manager, but make him no, give him a tool, give him an instrument by which he could further improve his uh, effectiveness of being a fund manager. And how, how does that happen? It's basically one, have uh, you know, access to a lot of data. Two, use that data, uh, see how the trends are and all that and backtest it and create out some very simple rules. And then run the portfolio uh, using those rules. But at the same time, do take into account that there will be extraordinary situations where these past algorithms or no, the past formulae may not work. So you, and that's why you continuously keep, it's not a machine which runs it, it's, it's a machine plus the human which kind of runs it. Mm -hmm. Now the fact is that globally, because there's been so much data, it's difficult for an, just a human fund manager, one to deal with all this data at one time, and then also to deal with all this data, not just for one company, for a number of companies. So that's where I think technology and you know, the computing power is now in our hands. And more importantly, I think the main, the key is that data is available. I think I remember 20, 25 years ago, you used to get very poor quality information. Companies used to announce results every six months, and then there was nothing, no additional information. Mm -hmm. What has happened is with the regulator coming in, market seeking more transparency, et cetera, there is a lot more data available and with much higher frequency. So that means more work, but obviously gives a lot more opportunity. And then you use the computing power available to make out those rules. And it has, a, I think, a very, has had a very good experience globally. And so in line with that, uh, well, as I said, that some bit of quantitative analysis, everybody does it, even in part of whatever, whether you are doing fundamental, technical, whatever. Here's an opportunity for us where we thought that we can put all the positives of fundamentals-based investing, which is what we are known for, along with a more disciplined investment approach. Uh, and loosely we put it all together and say, okay, it's a quantitative approach. So I think this is going to really, really take off as, and data availability, as you know, is not going to come down. It's actually going mm -hmm. to explode. And the only way you can handle this is going to be using technology and computing power. Right. A uh, very, very nice way that you put it, you know, you've sort of brought all the fundamentals and basics of investing uh, and backed it up with a strong uh, data and, you know, brought about this fund, quant fund, and very pertinent really in these uncertain times when you can sort of fall back on data for your uh, investments. So, um, you know, Chandrish, if you can uh, sort of elaborate further, when an investor puts money in such a fund, uh, is it best suited for, uh, is he looking at large caps or mid caps or small cap stocks? 
Great question. I think uh, sometimes people think that because quant is maybe more heavily trading oriented, it means more large cap, but that's nothing, well, nothing can be far from the truth. What are we trying to do? What we're trying to do is put together fundamental analysis along with some rules so that what a fund manager sees every day is he sees a lot of data, but he's also got the inner wiring and tuned into the sentiment and the prevailing sentiment. And sometimes that sentiment makes you do the make take the wrong decisions. I mean, so that's that's essentially what we are trying to. So on one side, we are helping the with the technology available, much better analysis. On the other side, have a better uh, rules based uh, system to help the fund manager take more objective decisions. I think that's essentially what we are doing. So when it comes to your question of whether it is large, mid or small, I think actually the power of this strategy goes beyond you know, this segmentation. As long as you have good quality information available, whether it is a large cap or a mid cap or small cap, you know, the quant processes can evaluate these businesses very, very quickly. In fact, you are in some sense you are right. The, Earlier approach used to be that let's look more for the frontline companies because there's more data available and mm -hmm. that, you know, we cannot track the thousands of companies anyway out there in the market. In that sense, I think some of the small and mid caps did get uh, ignored by some uh, processes or fund uh, investment strategy. I think this strategy allows you to evaluate dispassionately irrespective of size. Now we know that small caps will have higher risk but that is something again that can be uh, taken into account in the process itself. So to answer your question, doesn't matter. I think if you go out and go after the best opportunities available across uh, the uh, market cap space. Yeah. Right. So it sort of minimizes the risk because of the data available and allows the opportunity across, um, you know, all sort of sectoral indices as well as uh, market caps. The sentiment right now to bring that aspect back, the uncertainness, uh, we've seen the uh, the pandemic really uh, putting a lot of pressure on businesses and economies. Uh, we've seen um, companies reeling under a lot of pressure. So uh, how does this really affect the market sentiment for upcoming um, uh, NFOs uh, such as yours, Access Quant Fund included? So I think uh, what the pandemic has shown us, I think actually if you look at from an access perspective, the amount of new ideas and new product activity has probably been the highest in the last 10 years of our existence. And it's across, so whether it is quantitative, it's about other themes, it's about international investing. So, uh, because what we are finding is that the market is really getting uh, sophisticated, investors are getting sophisticated, and they are trying to find out what products really uh, are suited for their requirements. Hitherto, we did have a number of products, but they were kind of bundled with the same simple, similar, long-term growth at the right price or so somebody used to talk about value it were all all bundled in that one small uh, part of the universe now as people are becoming aware that the universe of strategies available is a lot more and i would certainly add going global uh, thematic investing uh, into you know, new age stuff like disruption climate change etc which are what is going to be the you know, growth drivers for the next many many years investors are really open to that so whether COVID or no COVID, I think uh, the, it's the pace of innovation is a, is driving investor behavior. I think that's a great positive uh, from a long-term perspective. So I see great potential for many new NFOs, new strategies to really come up from the industry. Right. And, and even in terms of, you know, technology playing a key role here, as you mentioned, um, you know, about uh, five to six years back, technology in the stock markets um, uh, didn't really sort of uh, go together. It was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, old um, investment advice coming in from the old hands in the stock market and, uh, you know, the, the, the money makers really who would give those investment tips. And now we see the investment, um, uh, you know, sentiment and the Indian stock market is slowly embracing models that are powered by these frontier technologies like machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and data analytics. So uh, how do you really see the future for quant funds um, you know, emerging forward and the key trends really that may rule this space? I mean, that's the great question, Shivani. I think there are 
I, I think way back uh, 10 years ago, there were these top, one of the top four you know, global consultants coming out with some papers uh, talking about the death of the fund manager. There's no need for a fund manager because the machine will do a much better job. Yeah. So uh, it's not happened yet. I don't know whether it will happen or not, but I think uh, I see this uh, when people say quant, it's not as if that they won't be a fund manager. I think that the more use of you know, the data available. So we are as a society churning out a lot of data. No, and there are various agencies, uh, GPS technologies, and all that, uh, which are well, you know, again making available. A lot of data is getting available. Credit card spends, the people mobility, how they are moving around. I think all of us during COVID were you no know, bombarded with some information where you no know, Google used to say that people's trips to the grocery store have come back to previous levels or 70% preview or to the pharma stores and all that. So all, there's so much information available. Now, uh, and all this is clubbed under what you said, big data and then AI and ML to kind of make sense of all that. So will this, you know, uh, they are, the, the movement in this uh, approach to use all this data is just dependent on our ability to one, harness the data first and then to make sense of it. And as we are seeing in every industry, it's just one way forward. People are looking at a lot more data structured, unstructured, and their technologies available to use unstructured data as well to ultimately make sense out of it. Uh, it's going to be a competitive market, people who do it well. Uh, so then you today, probably for many markets, maybe it's still not happened in India. You don't really need for a company to come out and tell you uh, exactly after a quarterly result that this is what their business is looking like and this is what they did. I think there are a number of ways where we'd obviously not have the numbers, but you will have a sense on you know, customer traffic, uh, depending on whatever space you are. Uh, people are talking about you know, uh, tracking ship look, container loads on a ship as it is moving on in the uh, in the oceans. So getting an overall trend on so what's happening to international trade and all that. So I think the future is uh, very bright for these technologies. It will be. These are not just must, uh, no good to have. They will become a must have over a period of time. Sure, and, and you know when you say the, uh, must become a must have over a period of time, uh, if you can also uh, give us um, a sense of comparison between how uh, quant funds have taken off globally and um, how much room or potential does it have in India, and uh, tell us a bit about Access Quant Fund as well. You know what is the offer like right now, and uh, you know the, the NFO as it is placed. Right, so I think globally, as I said, I think both traditional style of investing along with the new age investing, which has come up uh, in terms of passives and bonds. I think the three pillars. Passive has already obviously moved quite ahead, but if you really look at it, passive is one kind of bond investing only where you just, mm -hmm. there's a way where you weight uh, the portfolio. So, uh, so quant globally has become, uh, I won't call it as center stage. The center stage is still either at the passive or the traditional there. But we have a collaborator and you know, they operate in a number of markets. The usage of data and analytics in their entire decision-making process has just gone, the last five years has gone through the roof. So, so that's, that's the trend. Uh, in India, we still don't have too many quant specifically categorized quant funds. As I said, most fund houses are using quantitative techniques to some extent. But yes, running a product with the kind of discipline which is required and is possible with a quant fund is, is the beginning. And I think there will be many, many more to come. Over a period of time, I think it will like, let's say things like ESG investing, et cetera, it will get subsumed into the overall investment process itself where fund managers will look at all aspects of investing and quant will become the big uh, or com computation and analytics will become the big tool uh, to uh, you know, really implement these strategies. Coming to Access Quant Fund, yes, we are launching the Access Quant Fund uh, on the 13th. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to say that this is uh, not a tech based or a momentum based strategy. Uh, sometimes it gets confused. It is the classic fundamentals-based, uh, high-quality investing, QGARP, as I said earlier, quality growth at the right price, uh, doing all the things which a fund manager was, was doing in terms of evaluating businesses, making out forecasts, uh, understanding risks, 
we've just gone one step forward in getting uh, computational power help us do many of these things more objectively. And the fact that because technology is available, we can have a much bigger universe from which to choose. Uh, 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 hitherto, high quality companies and the availability of data made us restrict our universe uh, to about 250 odd companies. Now that restriction is no longer there, so we should be able to uh, exploit opportunities everywhere. And uh, yeah, so we will have the NFO and then we will, uh, we've already done past uh, performances, you know, uh, simulation analysis over the last 10 years. And one question which you talked about in terms of last year being a very volatile year, I think that was the time when we found that most investors have been most reluctant. And if it is mm -hmm. investors, it's also fund managers. I think they're also driven by similar sentiment. So if you had a very disciplined approach uh, it would have done much, much better than most investors and for that matter, even the market as well. From our perspective, when we look at just the last one year, uh, obviously this kind of a portfolio fell less as compared to the markets, but also it reached its you know, previous high, good three months in advance uh, before the nifty or the large broader indices reached their previous highs. So yeah, I think there is a lot of value to, uh, you know, this is to controlling your biases and you no know, controlling behavior, especially in extreme situations where you are just completely you know where fear or greed really overcomes you. And this is a great way to do you know, rational, quality-based, fundamentals-based investing. So really look forward to have a good NFO and, uh, and we'll have a good long-term product for investors to allocate to from a long-term wealth building perspective. Shah Chandresh, uh, I think, you know, you've uh, really thrown light on the opportunity and potential that uh, quant funds really offer. Like you said, um, it is largely about uh, getting down to the basics and the fundamentals of investing. Uh, nothing really fancy, but the beauty, of course, is the fact that it is uh, backed by um, a technology, frontier technology like artificial intelligence and analytics, uh, which really is the need of the hour in these uncertain times. Um, and that, of course, uh, also uh, provides uh, investors uh, a way into the markets uh, when the sentiment is uh, really um, a little volatile. They don't really know how to um, make sense of what is going on in terms of the economic disruptions that are caused. So, of course, quant funds uh, sort of allays a lot of those fears by minimizing the risk and really op optimizing on the opportunities for investors uh, to invest. So, thank you so much, Chandresh, for your time and all the best uh, with the new fund offer. Thank you very much, Shivani. Thank you. Really nice to be here. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.